Welcome back everyone. This is really just for entertainment purposes, but I wanted to test out 10 historical firearms and cartridges against modern soft body armor, because why not? It'll be interesting to see what does and doesn't penetrate. All these weapons are military surplus or antique in nature, but some of these calibers aren't out of date. 303 British and 7mm Mauser, which are smokeless powder cartridges, are going to be pretty similar to any modern day hunting cartridge and are still used quite a bit by collectors and shooters to this day. But they are historical firearms, so I thought it'd be neat to try out something a little bit different. We have a range of weapons from black powder pistols to smoothbore muskets, uh, black powder and smokeless uh, metallic cartridges, so really a 300 year timeline with weapons technology. Uh, pistols will be pretty close up of course and then we'll do 25 and 50 yards with various rifles and muskets. So this includes uh, round ball projectiles which we would have seen in conflicts from the American Revolution, the French and Indian War, pretty much the standard bullet projectile from the invention of small arms in the 1400s up to conical shaped bullets that were invented right before the American Civil War. Then we'll, uh, we'll shoot some 58 caliber round balls and minier balls out of a Civil War rifled musket. And then we'll move on to the transition period where we have black powder metallic cartridges, like in the 1873 trapdoor and the Martini Henry in 577-450. So we're set up with 3A soft body armor, which is rated to stop handgun bullets up to 44 magnums, but not rifle bullets. So I'll be interested to see how it goes against uh, Civil War era bullets, especially the conical minier balls. We have this set up uh, on top of a five gallon water jug so we can see if anything penetrates and then uh, nothing behind it so we can see how much it gives once the bullet hits. Um, so with that being said, let's start with our first gun, the 1860 Colt Army in 44 round ball using Pirate XP powder. And we're doing about 25 grains of that. So throw her down the range. All right, as you can see, right here is where it hit. It didn't penetrate. And in fact, if you watch the slow motion video, it actually bounces off. So this is the 1860 uh, Colt Army. Um, it's a Uberti reproduction, of course. And we're looking inside. And yeah, there's no, there's no penetration at all. So uh, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, with those round ball projectiles, you're probably not going to get any penetration whatsoever. Um, but that was, I counted 355 uh, feet per second, which of course is pretty underpowered. So if you were wearing this in the Civil War, you probably would have been okay if someone came at you with a pistol, at least a, uh, uh, a round ball uh, black powder pistol at about 15 yards. So at the Breda 51, we hit right here. And so that was about uh, 1,215 feet per second. And this is supposed to be graded for, um, for 2,000 feet per second. And if you take a look underneath, you can tell there's a pretty nasty, uh, there's a pretty nasty bump right here, uh, but it did not, I, I guess it sort of penetrated if you look inside, right there, and it definitely, whoever it hit, bruised, but it did not penetrate the bottle, so this person probably would have had a couple broken ribs, but they would have uh, likely been okay. This was actually from a, a previous shot, so ignore that one. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so this is a little bit unexpected, but I shot a uh, my Brown Bess um, Pedersoli musket right over there. Uh, I put about 100 grains down there with a 69 caliber round ball bullet, and I did not expect it to actually penetrate the armor at 25 yards, but you can see the bullet penetrated right there, which is pretty crazy. And as you can see from that video, it went right through there um, you can see the impact point take this off real quick you can see the impact point right right there where it cut through on the side so um, if you were wearing this in the American Revolution this would not have guaranteed you safety per se uh, yeah it, it went right through um, try to get this off Yeah, and you can see right here with that big round ball. Now the round ball actually, I don't think it actually went through the Kevlar. Um, I don't see an exit hole in here. That's pretty nasty, but um, I don't think it actually I don't think it actually penetrated through the Kevlar, but you would definitely, if this was your uh, torso, that would have been shattered. Um, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't penetrate to the back end, but um, that, would, that would have messed you up. So that was the brown bass musket at uh, about 25 yards. All right, so I think this experiment has come to a swift end. Um, this is pretty deformed at this point. Um, that 577 Martini Henry at 25 yards uh, <laughs> really tore this thing up. I mean, it is mangled and you can feel the Kevlar in there is just uh, in a pulp. So what I'm gonna do is I don't think we can really do much else with this. I think if we start using modern fire or modern cartridges like 303 British and uh, seven millimeter Mauser, I don't think we're gonna find anything <laughs> new that we don't already know that uh, full bore cartridges go through Kevlar um, pretty well. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually, in a little bit, take this apart, tear it down, and we'll go actually take a look at inside the, um, the armor itself. Now, at the beginning of this video, we said we would try out several different rifle calibers on this armor, but I think it became pretty evident after shooting it with a full bore Martini Henry at 25 yards that rifle fire would have pretty similar results regardless of caliber. I didn't want to disfigure the armor beyond being able to actually survey the impact points, and that's why I didn't continue uh, on with the 303 and 7 millimeter Mauser, you're just not going to get much variation with impact or protection against modern rifle fire with Kevlar. That would be better suited for modern hard plated armor, I think. Um, and with that being said, let's go ahead and actually take a look at the armor and see where it impacted and what was able to penetrate and you know what kind of protection that individual was getting. Okay, just for reference, here are the outside of the vest impact points. So 44 caliber round ball, 69 caliber brown vest impact, obviously the biggest. And it went right through here and broke the zipper. And then uh, right here, if you can see that, it's got the Martini Henry 577 450 bullet impact point. 
And then with the Breda 51, uh, there are actually two nine millimeter impact points, one right here, and then one right underneath of this lower belt. So let's go ahead and actually look at the Kevlar vest inside of the, uh, of the actual linen vest itself. All right, looking at the actual front of the plate, uh, we have, I outlined the various impact points. See the 1866, 44 cap and ball um, revolver, 25 grains of pirate XP at about 10 yards. And then uh, here are the two Beretta 51 nine millimeter cartridges at uh, 10 yards a piece as well. And then the Brown Bess 69 caliber round ball at about 20 yards with 100 grains of uh, 2F GoX powder. And this one obviously at the largest impact point here. And then finally we ended with the 577450 Martini Henry at 25 yards of smokeless powder with a 480 grain bullet. So uh, the 69 caliber is gonna have the biggest one. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and cut around here and um, we'll see what's actually inside the vest itself. All right, now that we've got everything opened up, let's go ahead and take a look at, just kind of taking a first look at the actual vest itself. Of course, Kevlar is layers and layers and layers of this Kevlar plastic polymer that is basically layered up. Um, I don't un entirely understand the science behind it, but um, it is comparable to the strength of steel per its uh, weight. So, you know, we've got the area where the 577 450 Martini Henry hit. Obviously, the brown bass isn't here. And then actually taking a look at the bottom, we do have the bullets. Interesting. So these all did come out, and it looks like we do have an exit wound of where the um, 69 caliber ball was. And let's go ahead and take a look at these. This is kind of the first time I've seen it, but let us... Try not to uh, damage this too much. So this is the back end here. As you can see, the Kevlar was pretty messed up. Um, it's very deformed. So those layers were absorbing a lot of shock. And you can kind of take a look inside here. And uh, actually it doesn't look like there was uh, any pre penetration on the, the front end inside of here um, other than so on the back. I'm not sure that there was any, doesn't look like there were actually any exit wounds, including the, the 69 caliber. But the 69 caliber ball had such an impact that it went through here, or the, the force of the shock actually went through the back. And then looking at the front, obviously, it looks like the bullets went through and eventually made their way down to the bottom here. So let's have us a look at the uh, various remains of bullets. So looks like we have the jacketed nine millimeter round right here and completely flattened. And then this looks like it's the uh, 577 450 Martini Henry cartridge, just complete, or the bullet completely flat. Uh, well, it'd be uh, 450 Martini, 45 caliber Martini Henry, because uh, the 577 is the parent cartridge. So completely flattened by the Kevlar. And then finally, this is what the Kevlar did to a 69 caliber round ball bullet. Pretty interesting. And of course, the uh, 44 caliber uh, round ball that we shot with the um, 1861 Colt Army, of course, bounced right off of it. Yeah, so these are the three projectiles that went into the, went into the Kevlar vest. And then again, of course, there is actually no exit wound from the 69 caliber ball but the impacts were so great 
on the Kevlar itself that uh, pretty much you would have had broken ribs uh, with either of the 69 caliber round or the 69 caliber round ball from the Brown Bass and the 577 450 Martini Henry. And that's how powerful those rounds were. And, and of course, if you watch the video, you'll see that if that had impacted your chest, you would have been either dead and, uh, you know, best case scenario, severely injured. So that is quite interesting. Okay, everyone, I actually made an additional discovery. So when I was going back and watching the video and, uh, sorry, the high speed video, I was wondering what this was, because it actually doesn't look like a Martini Henry 45 caliber bullet. And I actually think this is the 44 caliber round ball that entered through here. And the brown bass entered through here. And then of course the nine millimeter bullet going through here. And I was taking apart the Kevlar further. And in the video, what you see bouncing off is actually the paper wadding from the uh, 1860 44 caliber round ball. And in fact, let's go ahead and take this apart. I cut the body off of the Kevlar, uh, the front end, the white part. And as you can see, <laughs> so nothing on this end actually penetrated the 44 uh, caliber a uh, round ball didn't penetrate, which would have been right around here. And then you would have had the uh, brown bess cartridge or bullet would have gone here. And then of course the nine millimeter cartridge in here. And then they all would have just fallen to the bottom and they would have just rumbled around this uh, bottom strip. And this is where they were laying when I actually opened it up. Well, I just discovered this, which is of course the Martini Henry 45 caliber cartridge. Would you look at that? That is something else. Um, so we're finally getting closer to the actual <laughs> layer of Kevlar. And so you would have had it mushroomed up really well too. Look at that. And then of course you can see the, the tail end <laughs> underneath of it. The boat at the end there, just like a not quite a symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical mushroom, but pretty close. And it impacted right there. And so these were your four entry points and none of them went through the Kevlar. Now they impacted the other side, of course, which we've already established and probably would have injured this person. But I just wanted to point that out. So we do have actually all four bullet cartridges, or sorry, all four bullets. And then we're taking a look at the Kevlar itself. This is the front end. Not a single thing, not a single one of the bullets actually broke through any of the Kevlar here, which is quite amazing. Uh, even at 20, 25 yards with a 4570, 480 grain caliber ball with smokeless powder. Amazing. And then of course uh, you just have more layers, this internal layer here, and then the back end. Now, of course, the way, the, ent the way that the 69 caliber bullet entered, it still had an impact on the body on the other end, but just incredible that this Kevlar actually didn't, uh, none of the bullets actually went through this at all. So this is still, um, this is still here. And so again, once all the bullets impacted through these first couple layers, they, filtered and fell through the bottom. So it's pretty amazing guys. And I think this is a really cool demonstration with a few of these historical firearms. These videos, whether it's this one you just watched or other ones you may see online of different body armors being tested, always serve as a source of empirical data for the wider community to observe. Even if people aren't going into combat with cap and ball revolvers, or they're not necessarily going to be in a situation where they have to wear a Kevlar soft body armor vest uh, and shooting at somebody with a 69 caliber round ball uh, flintlock musket. Uh, that's a situation that is probably never going to happen again in human history, um, thankfully, uh, because those are na pretty nasty rounds. 
regardless, I think this makes some really intriguing content uh, for those of you who are watching. And, you know, I would have no idea what a 69 caliber ball would do to somebody at 20 yards if they were um, wearing body armor. But now I do, and I see the impact of it. And I got a little bit of experience uh, messing around with some soft body armor. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you tune in for future ones.